Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our midweek session. So why are we here? According to the church prayer book, we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. We will begin uh, with a song. Zoe will lead us um, in O to See the Dawn. Um, do please join in if you would like to. Uh, David will put the words up. Or if you'd like to just listen, that's fine. Um, we'll stay sitting down. Oh, 
So let's take a moment to think of the ways in which we've let God down, ways in which we've uh, made ourselves in need of forgiveness. Let's bring these sins, each one individually, to God in a moment of quiet. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. In our next song, we thank God for rescuing us from sin by becoming man, the incredible thing that God did to save us from sin by becoming man. In the song, Meekness and Majesty, we encompass this idea of man and God in one person. Meekness and majesty, manhood and deity. In perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility and washes our feet. This is the God, the maker, the creator of heaven and earth, who came down to save us from our sins. So let's sing meekness and majesty. Just do it. 
Right, a, a couple of days ago, uh, the church calendar had St. Joseph as the saint of the day. It was St. Joseph's day. And I'm going to read the bits in Matthew, um, which tell us the story of what Joseph got up to. Our first chunk is from Matthew chapter one, beginning at verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not wish to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So there we have Joseph with one of the really difficult jobs in the Bible. He was a righteous man, zealous in keeping the law, a religious man, a man, as we can clearly see, of faith. But in a society that put men first, he was told to marry and look after a woman pregnant, but not with his child. God had chosen Joseph and sent him an angel to give his message. And he believed the angel. He showed support for Mary publicly, took her home, married her, and took on the role that God had given him. The role of protector, breadwinner. We hear he was a carpenter, so he would have uh, been doing jobs um, in his workshop. And so we realized that God had made a very wise decision in choosing him. My next couple of verses in Matthew is in Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 13, the next step in Joseph's career as the stepfather of Jesus. Now, in between these two readings, we have the visit of the Magi, the, the wise men. And uh, you know that they were told by an angel not to go back um, to Herod and report about Jesus. Um, and so Joseph knew that Herod was on the warpath and afraid there was a, a king in, the, in Israel who would uh, threaten his rule. So um, our chapter 2 verse 13 um, when they had gone that's the magi an angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream get up he said take the child and his mother and escape to egypt stay there until i tell you for herod is going to search for the child to kill him so he got up took the child and his mother during the night and left for egypt where he stayed until the death of herod and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt have I called my son. This time the angel came in the night and said, get up and save the child from Herod. And so he got up in the night and it was still dark. And it says they, they left during the night, left for Egypt. He realized how urgent this was, so 
how would Mary and Joseph have Mary and Jesus have survived without Joseph there to look after them? They fled in the night. So again, Joseph obeyed the Lord and saved Jesus. Of course, we know the dreadful story how um, Herod sent his uh, uh, thugs into Bethlehem and killed uh, baby boys. Uh, which is a dreadful tragedy, but it wasn't Mary's or Joseph's or Jesus's fault. That was a sin at Herod's door. And my final reading, uh, further on in Matthew chapter 2, from verses 19 to 23. So Mary, Joseph and Jesus are in Egypt Presumably, Joseph is using his tools, which I expect he took round with him, doing um, carpentry jobs um, to keep bread on the table. And that for the next stage, Matthew chapter 2, verse 19. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. So that's dreams three and four in one paragraph. Um, again, Joseph obeys. God relied on Joseph, not just on the day-to-day -day care of his family, but also for their safety when life was threatened. First Herod, and then this dreadful son, Archelaus, who was known as a very cruel tyrant who would kill people uh, just for the fun of it. And in fact, later on, the Romans took him away because they felt he was a bit of an embarrassment to them. So the family goes back to Nazareth, where they settled down, presumably Joseph. Joseph got his tools out again and did some more jobs. And Jesus grew in this small, unimportant town. Apparently, there's no mention of Nazareth in the Old Testament, so it hasn't got a, a long um, Israeli history, but it was um, somewhere that uh, was a happy place in northern Israel um, for the baby to grow up into a little boy. And just one verse from St. Luke's, which is, it's only in St. Luke that we have uh, um, any reference to Jesus growing up. And this is Luke chapter two, the very end of the, of the chapter. Um, you know the, the story where Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem on, after his 12th birthday, and they lost Jesus and found him in the temple um, talking to the temple teachers <coughs> and they are looking for him and Mary says uh, why have you treated us like this your father and I have been anxiously searching for you when they found him your father and I which shows the happy united family they were in not that man who's my husband but not really your father but your father and I Jesus says, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? That father has a capital F, so it's God the Father. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. It's a wonderful verse. It's all we know about Jesus growing up, that he obviously knew. Oh, no, David's found the verse, brilliant. <coughs> Uh, Jesus obviously had some understanding of who he really was. Um, and that 
We know no more between then and when he begins his ministry later on. Right, now let's turn to prayer. And I will begin with the Church of England collect for St. Joseph's Day. God our Father, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph the carpenter to be the guardian of your incarnate son and the husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary, give us grace to follow him in faithful obedience to your commands through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for those who are sick at the moment and also those who are bereaved or supporting those who are sick or, or ill. Please just be really with them. Give them your comfort, your support, your peace. Please help those around to be understanding and supportive and to, to help them. Please also help others around to remember when there's something that's maybe a longer term thing that people maybe forget about. And please do help people who are just struggling year after year with illness or bereavement. Just be, be with them when others maybe have forgotten. Just give them comfort and your healing and draw them closer to you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift our world to you, a world so different to the one you planned for us. We pray for people facing famine, persecution, violence and warfare. Especially pray for the people of Ukraine for a just and lasting peace in that region. Also for peace and just government in Afghanistan. The peacemakers everywhere who are trying to resolve conflict. And for humanitarian organizations like Tear Fund who are trying to bring food and healing to communities who lack them. Pray for those in those nearer home who are in need. We pray for our local community. We pray for all who work and study in our area, the health services, education, local shops and offices, everyone who works there. And we pray for our local churches especially for St. James and for Holy Trinity Lions Down, for the leaders and congregations there. So Lord, we lift your world to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We will now say together the Lord's Prayer. So together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We will now sing our final song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Again, join in if you would like to, but just listen if you prefer to. Uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness is a, um, a special song for our family um, that has a significance for us that dates right back to Zoe's babyhood. Uh, I'll tell you about it afterwards if you ask me. So our final song. <clears throat> 